And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing gray trunks with red trim, fighting out of Seattle, Washington, by way of Phoenix, Arizona. He weighed in at a trim and ready 166 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 20. Champion known as the Mexican Monster, introducing And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he makes his fourth world title defense. Wearing camouflage trimmed in black, he weighed in 159 and one half pounds. In 29 professional fights, he is perfect. 29 victories, no defeats. 18 wins coming by way of knockout from Providence, Rhode Island. Here is the former WBO light middleweight world champion, the current reigning, defending, undefeated WBO middleweight champion of the world, Demetrius Bufo Andre! Yo, welcome to OTB Boxing School. It's been a long time coming, but school is back open. Class is in session. Man, new students go ahead, smash that subscribe button, hit that like button. Old students, thank you for keeping the school alive. But we got fight film to break down. Y'all know I couldn't wait to get to this. We got David 300 Benavidez facing off against Boo Boo Andre, the Mexican monster, gonna fight the fight. That allows Liam Williams to land that punch. Now, as we can see him rotating on the line, as we can see him giving Liam Williams as he changes the levels, he gives Liam Williams the left hand because he does it to set up that right there, the straight right hand. However, his punch and his striking um, fun can't fundamentals are so bad that he oversteps it and allow himself to get hit because he's so unorthodox that's just another way for them to say they have horrible fundamentals you understand but it works for him and if it ain't broke don't fix it you can see him laying that that um that uppercut but look at him right here close the distance roll up under the lead hand but he doesn't transition to a counter puncher's mind state and his muscle memory so he doesn't let go of his hands when he does close the distance that will be something that'll be detrimental for him throughout the course of this fight when you close the distance against david benavidez your ass better work otherwise you will get worked because david works now we just gonna look at him again, close the distance with no um objectivity to work. He doesn't have working in mind because a lot of times when he closes the distance, it's the weave a punch and his mind doesn't transition three right the, that three piece right there with no biscuit. You understand? He changed the levels, but he ain't holding the phone. He's not active when he down there. So a fighter like a David Benavidez, who's a high volume fighter, he gonna put that shit in the dirt. So I don't want to see you changing levels, doing that old unorthodox ass, changing the levels, not holding the phone shit. Put that shit in the dirt and leave it there for this fight you can get that shit off against them but up against a fighter like david benavidez i don't want to see that now look at him shoot that jab right there as he steps with it but he sails out these will be the time he sails out he throws a lot of power punches to keep his um opponent on the line and when you do that you have to bring your legs to the party baby you got to bring your legs to the party because David will take advantage of that. David will land a check hook off of that. You understand? He has power in his front and right hand. But look at him laying that left hook, then pivot out, get his head on that, on that lead shoulder, and then clinch up. That's beautiful fucking boxing. That's the type of shit that's going to allow you to win this fight, boo-boo. So I need you to run an extra four miles a day from this day on until the fight. You're going to need your legs all 12 rounds of this fight. But 
but look at him get caught on the line, changing the levels, he's holding the phone, that's off the ropes. We want to keep this fight in the middle of the ring where your legs can help you, where your legs can determine um, the amount of, of pressure that you allow David to put on you. Because we know David puts a lot of pressure on his, on his opponent, you understand? And it's not a lot of punch output pressure. But right here, I just wanted to show you that straight right hand that he was setting up the land. When he sets up the land, his, when he lands his punch, your ass is going down. We've seen David get put down from the same exact punch. Now I wanted to look at this official knockdown by DeMond Nichols at OTB Boxing School because they feet were entangled up. He just went to your body and your legs gave out. So I'm going to need you to run an extra three, four miles and I'm going to need you to be ready for the type of body punching that David Benazavidez possesses. Now that was just the clip that you see right there. That's David getting his head over his front foot and getting caught with the same punch that um we just seen Boo Boo set up for rounds. He, he set that punch up for almost three rounds against Liam Williams, which was very impressive because now we know Boo Boo possessed the ability to set a trap. It's can, um, can you be alive long? Can you stay alive long enough for your trap to be successful? Now let's look at Caleb Plant who had some success putting David on his back foot. David ate that two-piece right there, which he will because David possesses power in that check hook. So when David lets you get that off, it's because later on he plans on landing that check hook, which we just seen um, the next time you try and put him on his back foot. And David has a high ring IQ. He adjusts maybe um the only fighter I think are just faster than him on the fly is probably Terrence Crawford man he's a high IQ fighter he he makes adjustments um sometimes within the round when you go back and watch the film on David but I showed you this clip because David sells out a lot too so there'll be opportunities for Boo Boo to um take advantage of these sellouts when you have that type of weight transition but you have to be in an offensive and a counter puncher's mind state you have to transition from defense weaving the punch to offense landing my punch um within seconds because that weight transition and that sellout when he got all that weight on that front foot and he's selling out oh if you sit on that punch that's a pretty ass knockout right there now as we can see david again he just goes back as you put him on his front foot he'll back up and get to a point where he can recontrol the line, which is grade A boxing from David. Now look at that check hook right there. He'll eat the body shots. He'll take that. That's something that's worrisome for me when David's fighting a power like a, I mean fighting a fighter like a Boo Boo Andre that possesses the one punch power to put him on his ass. You're that willing to exchange because Caleb Plant isn't a striker. Caleb Plant didn't really sit on his shots the way he should have um when those when these opportunities presented himself because you're such a high volume puncher that a lot of times fighters are just glad to get away and recontrol the line and reset up however if you can work look you can split that guard boo boo David lets you split the guard. He'll let you get close and clinch, but you have to work in these type of situations. You understand? As we can see him push off against Caleb Plant, get his hands all in his face. David is a supreme clincher because, man, he gets to throwing elbows and he outworks you in these type of situations. You cannot allow him to do so. I need for you to throw three, four punch combos and get out of there. For David, when you let them close the distance on you, Show me a little head movement lateral. Get your head on one of them shoulders so you ain't taking so much punishment within landing your punch. Now, it's not an exchange. It's a counter. It's a landed punch for you. This can be something that... um that that you can work on and this will be the progression of david benavidez from otb boxing school but right here i just wanted to show you look he does have a tendency to lean out with that jab as you get the boxing him and he's not getting the type of punches that he wants david gets impatient and when he gets impatient he becomes willing to exchange to land his punch so i'm gonna need a boo-boo andre i'm gonna need the camp of boo-boo andre to make sure that 
we are specific and we work on these and we work on this weight transition within these type of moments and we work on this transition from defense to offense from weaving a punch to landing a punch you understand this will be the difference in Boo Boo Andre being able to win this fight look another exchange from David um, that's the Mexican style I'll take a punch to land my punch I'm the tougher guy you know nobody feels they're tougher than um, Mex than Hispanics at heart so that's why that's their style because they know how willing they are in this clip I just wanted to show you um, the adjustment that he makes you understand look the kid has power off the front foot and the back foot in the lead hand and the pack him in these type of situations and once he gets you hurt we know what the Mexican monster gonna do he is the Mexican monster for a reason you understand um I have the utmost respect for both of these fighters um in inside the ring but in this video I just wanted to show you look even Anthony Durrell got to close the distance and land his punch. It's can you sit on that punch? Can you set that up? That needed to be a three to four punch combination in order to be um, a successful transition, a successful um, you you closing the distance and having success doing so. Because look, David will lean back on these ropes. He'll bait you into these type of situations because he's that confident in his power. He's that confident in him outworking you. Yeah, you know I mean, once he closes space. But we about to see something that I want to see see the camp of Boo Boo Andre pull um the refs to the side because David got away with this a lot against Caleb Plant and that's this right here look at that elbow that's a straight elbow to the jaw that has no place in boxing that has no fucking place in boxing and I expect for you as we can see more willing to exchange but I expect for you and your camp to pull these refs in there and tell them hey I want him pointed for this now don't get me wrong you allowed to get one off but this is something I'm gonna need you to make sure that you check the distance before you allow I mean before you close the distance a lot of times David putting pressure on you he walks in your space and he smothers his own punches which is why he lands so many elbows which is why um it looked like Caleb Plant was was clinching up and holding uh, um um so much throughout the course of that fight when David is maintaining that type of pressure by continuously walking in his space and not allowing his opponent to um control the line so that's also something that you can use to your advantage but overall I have David Benavidez winning this fight because I just don't see um, Boo Boo's legs being able to maintain all 12 rounds not to mention I, I could I, I want to say I see both fighters hitting the canvas that's why this was the first fight breakdown I showed you um, both fighters actually getting knocked on their ass in the in the um, tutorial in the beginning in the intro of the video I have David Benavidez Went in this fight. However, I do expect um, Boo Boo Andre to give us a performance that'll deem him worthy to become a champion again and will show us that he either deserves the winner of Canelo Benavidez after that fight or he deserves the loser in an effort to maintain um, to maintain another opportunity to at, at that title shot, you understand, and at that undisputed shot at 168 because we about to have a triangle theory, and y'all know how I feel about triangle theories in boxing. They full of shit, you understand. Um, you have to beat that fighter the night of the fight. However, that concludes the breakdown on David Benavidez and um, Boo Boo Andre. Now, show times. We will be on Upper Echelon every Thursday. Some Tuesdays, we will be on Upper Echelon um, Fight Group, uh, Upper Echelon Sports Bar and Grill. Um, we will have Capra Fact Fridays, the first Capra Fact. Give me 50 comments, 50 likes on this video um, within the next 24 hours. And we will do a live breakdown on Tuesday of Shakur Stevenson and Edwin De Los Santos. That is the next breakdown that's up. And that will be followed by Regis Pro Grace Devin Haney. I am such, I'm so proud of boxing as a sport within um, the time period which I I became a channel until now the fights that we 
um, felt like we weren't going to get boxing is starting to give us. However, we have to stay on the necks of these fighters. So I take this moment to apply all content creators, whether you got two view, two subscribers or 200,000 for pushing the sport of boxing. Um, OTB Boxing School, appreciate y'all. And while the school was closed, y'all kept me in position to love the sport of boxing. So I apply all of y'all right now. As I said, we will have Capper Fact Friday um with my co-host um ohio runs boxing this friday give me 50 likes 50 give me 50 likes um and 50 um comments let me know who you got winning this fight and why and um let's get back to it it's a beautiful time to love boxing man we we got a lot of big fights coming up we getting these big fights and um it's our job to support these fighters once they lose as a maintaining effort for us to get these fighters to take these level of fights on that note i'm out class is dismissed on boo boo andre david benavidez i couldn't have been, have had um any much more fun breaking this fight down and doing this fight film as y'all know i love this sport of boxing and it's a good day for you to love it too on that note we out class is dismissed